First, let me commend my brother, the Senate advocate, for a great paper. Um, Noni saying was brilliant. There are so many brilliant people, but there are few sincere and honest people. So I, I respect and commend you for the truth. Brilliance is cheap, but honesty is expensive. Thank you very much. Let me say this very clear, and I'm going to respond to three key points. First, in every country, elections are one of strategy. So in the U.S. today, you see policy people, strategists, thinking around messaging, thinking around mapping constituencies. In Nigeria as well, election is one of strategy. And the strategy of election in Nigeria is very simple. Bribe INEC, bribe judiciary, commandeer the security. And they are done. The, the people that destroyed 23 election is INEC and judiciary. The rules were clear. The, son, the electoral act is not perfect, but it was very clear. I, I, I'm surprised that any judge who understands administrative law, which I have taught in the university for years, which I studied under the best in the world, would argue that an entire regulation built on a law, an act, a regulation, directing that you will do X, you can choose to do Y. When there is legitimate expectation and detrimental reliance, INEC was totally wrong. And the courts, Supreme Court downwards, got it wrong. When an agency created under the law with a nothing act and the constitution that says you can make rules, makes rules, those rules are law. They can unmake it through rulemaking process. If they don't, they are bound to obey it. Results should have been transmitted electronically. I'm ashamed. I have a PhD in law and I can stand anywhere in the world to dispute the best and brightest. I was ashamed that the court affirmed that I can just walk away from the law. Five years I was a regulator of electricity. When we make tariffs, it's the same way I makes rules. We make those laws, tariffs. They are legal instruments. They are binding the law. I hold I make responsible and I hold the courts responsible for the failure of the elections. <laughs> Sir, it's important to clarify who can sue. Here is the point. Electoral jurisprudence, the problem with Nigerian elections is that they don't understand electoral jurisprudence. Electoral jurisprudence is that the court's job is to restore back power to the people voting. Democracy is not... A, the dispute is not between Mr. Amade and Mr. Okutipupa. No. It's about the people's right to elect their leader. Therefore, we shouldn't be saying that only persons who contested and who could have won could file electoral petition. No. P citizens who voted have a right to go to court and say that they, they, the process was faulty. Look at the U.S. jurisprudence. All the cases that went to court in 2022, in 2020, I guess, were mostly by civil society groups and voters. That should change. Now, what does it take to nullify election? I always wonder why judges feel that what they call substantive justice, substantive compliance. If elections were conducted outside the rules, that is enough to nullify the election. You don't have to prove that you would have won. Elections should be nullified if they are conducted Contrary to rules, our jurisprudence is 40 on that. So, the question then is, there's a key, a key point somebody mentioned about too much burden on the, on the judges. It is caused by INEC. And I make this clear. The new Electoral Act provides two safeties that we destroyed. First, internal democracy. It says that all candidates must be either elected directly or indirectly if you choose indirect, then he laid out democratically elected. Let me say it clear. The court has a right and a duty to overrule parties if they present candidates they did not go through the rules of the constitution and their own internal rules. There's no justice like saying, look, there are three people here. 
members of the party have a right to due process. That's why the Act provides for it. And that's the Constitution provides for it. So if you do not second guess politicians, then you are, it's not that you are imposing the candidate, you know, you are requiring them to follow the rules. And that's what the Supreme Court has been saying before. And the final point I want to make is very clear on this. INEC needs to start doing administrative adjudication. Now, let's be very clear. Every process in an election, including rulemaking, including declaring results, are administrative procedures that require due process. Meaning that INEC should be sitting and making rulings on objections during collection of elections. I watch the drama where INEC says, call result, you call result, after I go to court. No, that's not the way. That is an intermediate procedure before adjudication in court. That is administrative hearing. You must establish the validity of those results through a process that INEC cannot make rules which the court will now review through the review. So the critical point is here, and I want to end on this note. The Amity case you mentioned, sir, interesting case. The court did something that was nice, but look at the failure. The issue is, it's not for the court to impose candidates. Courts can verify results and ask people to elect, to go back. So we have to redraft timelines to allow for repeat elections, not imposition. And the key point here then is that this is not a matter of nicety. I like the point you made. Politicians are my dogs. You need to police them. But when the policer of my dog is himself mad, then that's confusion. The judiciary should no longer be thinking of politicians as people who want to do public good. The public interest is to impose order and regularity in politics, not to allow politicians to self-regulate. That is the lesson of history. I don't blame politicians. I blame judiciary. I blame INEC because they abandon their work and politicians are the ones who can never see power and leave power. You have to treat them as persons who have adverse interest to public interest and force to regulation the convergence of private and public interest. Thank you very much.